Well, hello there. My name's Adam D. And I am Jesse. And together we are... Kill Switch Engage. No, not just us. Or Wild Stallions. Yeah. Wild Stallions. Shut up. Fuck yeah, Metal Mother Truckles is Axel again from Pitcam TV. And now I'm here with Almighty Adam D and Jesse from Killswitch Engage. Almighty. How are you doing, man? <laughs> we're good. A little tired, a little slap happy. But we're good. And you? That's fine. I'm fine too. Good. What about you, Jesse? Good. Man, you look tired. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just a little jet lag, but we're doing good, man. Yeah. Oh, come on. You have a, a new album coming out. We do. <laughs> yeah. Four years after the last one. Mm. Has it been four years? Yeah. Holy crap. 2009. Disarmed the Descent. Wow. Man. And now back again with Jesse. Yeah, with this jerk. <laughs> Welcome back, jerk. Yeah. It's like an old dirty shoe for you, working with oh, him. Oh, yeah, eh? the dirtiest. Like the shoe you left in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> Just swampy and you never want to put it back on again. Thanks, dude. You're welcome. <laughs> What was the songwriting like for you now with, on, on the new album? Uh, honestly, it was the same approach as we you know, did every other record. Um, just kind of get the songs together. Um, you know, we usually like, all come up with ideas on our own and then bring, like, the, uh, bring them all together for everyone to listen to and approve afterwards. So it was the same kind of process with that. And the only difference is now we had a different singer. Uh, yeah, and I was given an uh, entire record done, you know, musically. Uh, so I just listened to it over and over again and started writing down ideas and concepts based off of the tones. You know, what, um, you know, for example, I'd play a song and, and write down, you know, betrayal or something and start writing about that subject. And underneath the umbrella of the title of the record, which we had decided, Mike D and I decided from early on, was going to be Disarm the Descent. So that's kind of the theme of the whole record. And is it anything uh, other for you, uh, working not in Times of Grace? Uh, uh, back again with Kill Switch? Well, it's a different... It's a different animal altogether. Um, I think, if anything, just being in the studio with Adam for Times of Grace sort of helped warm me up as far as my vocals are concerned and the creative process of writing and working with Adam again. But as far as recording for this record, it doesn't have much to do with Times of Grace. Ditto. Great. Are you uh, fine with this uh, voice? I hate it. <laughs> it's the most awful thing I've ever heard. I also hate my voice. No, oh. I don't. No, I don't. No. Yes, I do. No, it's uh, Jesse's uh, a great singer, and uh, I think he and I just mesh really well musically, just with uh, our ideas. And I don't know. I think it just works works well. Yeah, we we play off each other's strengths. Um, he definitely helps me become a more polished singer. So I come from hardcore and punk, so I have a tendency to push and be emotional. And sometimes I go flat and I go sharp. Uh, so he's really helped me over the years to uh, make my voice more um, listenable. <laughs> 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 I was trying to find the words. I'm like, uh... No. no, but it's been good. It's been really good. It's, it's helped me gain a lot of confidence as a vocalist working with Adam. Yeah. And uh, I love the, um, the passion and the inspiration that Jesse brings the table when you know he's writing a song with me um it's just as a producer it makes my job a lot easier when somebody already has a story to tell and is passionate about what what they're writing about so as you said you're a producer um you produce many other bands and many other albums. i also produce feces daily <laughs> as we all do a healthy digestive tract should thanks for the science lesson yes uh, um, what is the difference uh, to produce your own songs? Um, it's, it's honestly, it's very similar to working with another band. It's just kind of, uh, of course, being able to put my role aside as a, as a guitar player. You know, just put that aside for a while and just think about the, the bigger picture instead of just the guitar parts. You know, it's the, the song, everybody working together and make the, the song the best it can be, you know. Yeah. Great. And there's a, a bitchin' solo in due time. In, in due time. 
Ah. And I just wanted to know what your influences are for kind of that. For the guitar solos? Uh, I pretty much know like four or five guitar licks, so I'll just kind of play those. <laughs> Every time the same? Yep, pretty much. <laughs> Great. And so there are many, many bands in this uh, genre metalcore, uh, a genre you gave kind of shape, I would say. And what is it like for you uh, to be unique as you are? What are you doing to uh, form this uh, style of music? Yeah. I I would never say that we are we'd be responsible. There are many bands uh, calling you as an influence. Oh, well, that's very nice of them. But uh, I wouldn't say that we're specific, like specifically like it's because of us that there's a genre or anything. I think we just kind of do our thing. We're we're even alluding to other bands like In Flames and you know like Carcass, like all those bands were doing this sound way before us. You know, so. Yeah. But for this metal core, I don't know if it's cool for you if we call it metal core. Ah, whatever. Yeah. What would At this point, it is what it is. Metal core is what it is. You know, I think when that term was officially coined back in the day, we were all kind of like, what is that? Yeah. Because, you know, some record guy probably came up with a term to describe the style of music. But um, at its essence, though, it's, you know, hardcore and metal come together. And I'm a hardcore kid, you know, and I joined a metal band. So I brought my hardcore influence into a metal band and Adam is has a key, key uh, ear for melody so that's just kind of how it happened just but you know we weren't the first to do it we were just one of the ones that got recognized for it but we're standing on the shoulders of the underground giants I think you know and talking about lyrics you're you're saying that you're a hardcore kid uh, what are your lyrics about now I mean I'm a hardcore kid at heart, but I'm also, you know, a grown man. So uh, I've You're a hardcore I, man. Hardcore man. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, you know, hard, hardcore. When I say I'm a hardcore kid, that's where I started. But as I've grown, I've fallen in love with all different kinds of music and gotten influences as far as you know, reggae music or hip hop music, all the way through grindcore. You know, like all different kinds of music are what drives me and makes me want to do what I do. But Lyrically, I'm just writing um, my point of view of the world. And what was special with this record was I, I took influence from other people's struggles. I took influence from other people's stories and wrote about them. So I'm not just writing about me and, and stuff that I see. I'm writing about other people as well. So this sort of story is being told as well, which I think is something that's unique for me as a writer. I, I just recently started writing that way. Because you do not want to tell your own story? Well, not even that. I just think that um, there's only so much you can say about yourself before you just start repeating yourself. So I think for me is um, drawing inspiration from other people and other things like world events, for example, just broadens the, the subject matter and makes it more interesting. Yeah. How can you not be inspired by things around you, too? You know, it's, everything inspires you. Yeah. Is it only you writing the lyrics or are you working... Together. On this one I did, it was me writing the lyrics, but I very much lean on Adam to help me refine stuff or change a word here and there. It's really key. Um, and that's, again, how we work really well together. I'll come to the table with like two pages of lyrics. He'll skim through them and say, I like that, I like that. And we'll sort of piece them together. Sometimes I'll have a solid idea and other times I'll be like, Adam, I need help. Take my lyrics. What do we do? And he'll go, I like this, I like that. And we'll make it work. Sometimes it's fine the way it is. Sometimes you got to start from scratch. It just depends on how the it, you know, fleshes out and vibes out. Yeah. What's your yeah. favorite one on this record? Uh, Come on. That's hard to say. Um, I can't say it's my favorite, but I definitely love um, tracks that make me excited. Uh, New Awakening or The New Awakening. I don't even know what we ended up calling it. Uh, and uh, Beyond the Flame. I love that song. Just because it's really melodic, um, "You Don't Bleed for Me" I think is another really good song too. Because it's a departure um, sonically; it's got indie rock influence in the riffs, uh, and I'm really excited about that. It just adds a different element. Does that make the record? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's the one that that's the one that Justin wrote. I can't remember. It all happened so fast, man. Yeah. <laughs> Four years. That's what she said. Yeah. It is. Very much so. 
Fine. Uh, let's talk about uh, these uh, online online music streaming. What do you think about uh, that? Online music streaming? Yeah. Yeah. It's, do you uh, think it's fine, or is it a kind of downfall of music business, or is it? Oh, uh, it's great for bands who are starting out. That's you know the best way they can get their product out there. Um, but uh, I know record labels don't like it very much. And you, as a musician? Um, I I see it is it, it is what it is. You know, it's um. And you know, at this point now, bands don't make a living through selling records anymore. It's more so the touring and playing music. So, um, you know, it's a, it's great for the fans, you know. But do you think it's uh, good for bands when it's only about touring, producing, touring, producing? Well, is there any life anymore for them? Is there any life for you? Yeah, it is. Or... I would say that um, I think it sort of may shorten the length of a band's career, though, because if you're out touring constantly to make a living, you get burnt out where... In, in the early days when you got royalty checks, you had a little bit of a stability, so you could sort of maybe not tour as much. But I think for metal, maybe, it doesn't really matter so much because metal's always had to work really hard to, to make a living off of music. I'm sure it affects um, rock artists and pop artists a little more, but it's a bummer, but it's at the point now where it's it's been happening, so you just kind of have to get over it and move forward. And we look at records now as just a, sort of like an advertisement for our live shows. That's pretty much what it is now. And there's an upcoming tour which leads you through Europe and Germany, especially. What can we expect? Are there any uh, supports confirmed yet? No. I don't think anything's confirmed. No, we don't have any confirmed yet, no. Yeah. But uh, I, think, I think we'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> That's We're going to have holograms of ourselves. We're not even going to be there. It's just going to yeah. be a, a projected image We're gonna of us. We're going to phone it in. Yep. <laughs> Any special uh, effect planned or stuff? You uh, want to tell us now? Just no. these muscles. 